Okay, welcome to Mass with Ish. Now, this particular question generated a lot of controversy and um, so many persons were having different opinions concerning especially the value of Y. So let's look at the two answer to this. Now, um, if you look at this diagram, there is no particular figure given to us. So all we have to do at this point is to use our knowledge of the theorems of a circle to determine one or more of the values of these um, missing um, or marked angles. And then from there we can now solve to bear the rest. So let's go without wasting time. So the first theorem we can apply here is the theorem that says that the angle at the semicircle is equal to 90 degree. That's the first theorem. And what is that angle at the semicircle? That is the angle subtended by this diameter. You see, this is a diameter. So if you follow the two ends of the diameter, anywhere it meets the circumference, that angle is always equal to 90. So this angle here is 90. Now, here is 90. You have been able to establish that. Now, but note that this angle that is 90, this is not the value of y. This is where most, most people made a mistake. This is not the value of y. So if I label here A, B, C, D, and E, if you check how this angle Y is being marked, Y comprises of angle A, B, C, and Y is A, B, C plus A, B, D. Can you see that? Because that side is being marked. So if you say y is 90 then you are wrong now since we know that y is a b c plus a b d and we've already gotten our a b c as 90 all we need to get now is our a b d that is this other side let me use a red marker for that so we want to get here now how do we get there listen also there's a theorem that says that the angle in alternate segments are equal. How do we get the angles in alternate segment? Look at it. This is where this is a chord. A, B is a chord. A any angle that a chord forms with a tangent, this is a tangent. Any angle it forms with a tangent always equal to the angle of the alternate segment. That is this angle. If you check this chord, trace this, the two ends of this chord, trace it to the circumference, this angle here. So if we are able to get this angle theta here, it means that we have gotten our angle ABD. Now, how do we get angle theta? Very easy. We have known that this angle here is 90, right? Our ABC is 90. So it therefore means that this angle X and theta will be equal. Why? Because we have been marked. These two lines here has been marked. Okay? So if they have been marked as equal, therefore means that this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, the base angles will be equal. And these two must sum up to 90 since here is already 90. So our x and our theta we have the same value. So our x is equal to theta, and that's going to give us what 90 divided by 2, and that is what that is 45 degrees. So we have gotten our x as 45. So if x is 45 degrees, that also means that theta is 45. And our theta is in what? Is also equal to A, B, D, based on what I first explained about alternate segment, angles in alternate segment. Okay, so here also is theta, and this is what? 45 degrees. So we have gotten our A, B, D now, that is here, as 45. And that makes our value for y, let me bring it here, that makes our value for y to be 90 plus 45, and that is 135 degrees, okay? So our y is 135 degrees. Now the same thing happens also, what happens to z? Our z, our value for z will also be equal to x because this is a chord, based on my explanation, this is a chord. This is a chord, this is the angle this chord makes with the tangent. So it will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So which means that Z and X are equal. So our angle Z is equal to X and our X is what? Is 45 degree. So we have gotten all our answers. Our answer is that X and Z equals to 45, while our angle Y is equal to 135 